Okay, so in the last video, what we did is we took our EEPROM and we programmed in all the digits 0 through 9 into this EEPROM. And I can show you that. We have 1, um, 2, all the way up to 8, and then, of course, 9. Okay? Now, what we're going to do in this video is we're actually going to program all the way up to the number 255, which, in case you remember, is actually the max value. If you remember, the way we access a two-digit number and three-digit number is different. So what we have here is this, this line right here is for the assign and unsigned bit, which we won't get to in this video. In fact, we'll get to that a little bit later. It's really not important right now. But we use these two address bits to set which digit we're talking about. So right now, this is at 0 and 0. So that means that we're accessing the first digit. But if I change this to 0 and then 1, we access the second digit, which is also a 5 because 255, the tens place digit, is a 5. And then if I change this to 1, 0, we get a 2. So we'll have a counter over here, which will count through the number 0, 0, then 0, 1, and then 1, 0 really fast. So that this way what we see is 0, 0, first digit showing, 0, 1, second digit showing, and then 1, 0, second digit, third digit showing. So we get the number 2, 2, 5, 5 showing out here. Okay, and that's what we're going to deal with in today's video is building this counter circuit to do this so that we can actually get a full number to show up. Now, the, uh, now we're going to go over the software that programmed this because obviously there's a gap um, in the software that allowed me to do this. For a one digit number, like for example, zero right now, you don't need the tens place digit and you don't need the one hundreds place digit. But what I did is I had those displays off by setting all these bits to be 1. So I said if it's a 10 if it's a 1 digit number essentially it's a number that's less than 10 then turn the tens place then for the tens place address which is 0 1 then turn all these bits high. And then I said for the hundreds place digit do the same thing set these all high. And then I said if the number is less than 100 aka it's a 2 digit number then just set the third place digit high. Um, so this way, this LED display will just be off instead of you know showing a zero. And that has to do with uh, the reason that it will show a zero has to do with the arithmetic that we use to get the first digit out. Okay. Now another thing that I want to point out in terms of hardware changes, what we have is the right signal coming straight into the EEPROM. Now you may remember before that we built this RC circuit that brought this right signal out to a resistor capacitor circuit that would build this you know negative spike for us that would give us a 470 nanosecond negative spike. Now. I don't know what why we needed that in the last video. Now I remember putting that in, like I said in the last video, made the circuit work, but I think it wasn't working for a different reason in the software that I fixed. I don't know what it is, but now it's fixed because now when I write with one microsecond pulse, it works. So there's really no need for this um, RC circuit, so I just sort of removed it. So now we have the hardware change out of the way. We can go ahead and take a look at the software. Now I don't remember we having this third digit um, as an argument in the code that we built in the last video. But let's just go back and review even if we did. So write data, we have the data that we're trying to write, which is the integer value of the information that we need to show a number on the seven second display. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, just go back and watch the uh, last videos. And then we have the address that we're programming it at currently. And then we have int digit. Now digit says which digit we're talking about. So we set the digit first, okay, here with this set digit um, method which is down here void set digit okay so we take a digit so it's just saying if the digits equal to zero then our pins um which are pins eight and nine we want to be low and low because um the number zero in binary is zero zero aka low and then low and then we say if digit is equal to one then we want to say zero one at those address at the digit um bits you know the bits that we use on the eprom to say which digit we're accessing currently so and that's and since one is zero one in binary we're just going to say low and then high and then for digit is equal to two we just want to say high and then low because that's the um, binary form of two so all we're doing here is we're just it's just another um tack on to the address which digit that we're talking about so we just say oh set the address which is the number we're talking about and then set the digit, which is currently what digit we're trying to program into the EEPROM. It's a pretty simple concept. So what I did is I built this for loop. And so this will basically just go through starting at i equals 0 and go until i is equal to 255. Okay, and just keep adding 1 to i each time after it executes this code. And we've used four statements before. Now, what I'm going to do is I first write the ones place digit of the number by getting the ones place digit with this i divided by, or i mod 10. Um, modulo is an arithmetic operation, just like any other one, and you use it mainly in computer science. So if I take, for example, x and I mod it by y, all I'm saying is I want x divided by y 
and then get the remainder. Let's just do an example. So 20 mod 2 means that we have 20 divided by 2. Now, obviously, this is 10 with a remainder of 0, obviously. So then that means that 20 mod 2 is equal to 0. A different example, how we actually use this mod function. So we have the number 255, and we say mod 10. What's that going to be equal to? Well, we just set it up. 255 divided by 10. We know this gives you 25 and then remainder of 5. That's because 25 times 10 is 250 plus 5. So that means 25 mod 10 is 5. And you'll notice that it's equal to the first digit. So let's do a different example. Let's say we had the number 177 mod 10. What is that going to be equal to? Remainder of 7. So that means 177 mod 10 is equal to 7. And 7 is the first digit here. Now this is a pretty common trick to go ahead and get the, um, the first digit out. Okay, so that's just how the mod function is going to work. Um, so what we do is I just take the number that we're currently on, which is i, and I say mod 10, and that'll return the one space digit, and I say, now go ahead and get the data from our array, which returns, you know, the bits, and we just write that number in, and address i, and then the digit that we want is currently zero, because we're getting the one space digit, and we do that for every single number, because every single number that we program in is going to have a one space digit, obviously. So, then we, what we move on to is i is greater than 9. So if i is greater than 9, what we want to worry about is the tens place digit. Okay, so as soon as we hit the number 10, for example, we need to worry about programming in the tens place digit. That's why I have this check here. Now, you don't really need this check because take, for example, the number 0. The way we do the math is that if we try and get the tens place digit for the number 0, it's just going to give us a 0. So that means it would just say, oh, at address 0 in the EEPROM, which should return the number 0, in the 100s place digit, you have a 0. In the 10s place digit, you also have a 0. And in the 1s place digit, you have a 0. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to have zeros in all three displays. If it's a number 0, I really only want to have it in the 1s place digit. So what I said is only start programming the 10s place um, digits when the number is greater than 10. That's why I have this check here. So the way we do that is we just divide the number by 10 and then get the 1s place digit. So that's how we get the 10s place digit. Okay, so now to get the tens place digit, we're doing this i divided by 10 and then mod 10. Now, what's this doing? Okay, so it may seem different, but it's not really. So all we're doing is, let's just take our classic example of the number i is equal to 255, okay? So all we're doing is 255 divided by 10. Do that first, and then we just mod 10. Okay, now this number is going to be equal to 25.5. But because we're dealing in integers, right, integers are only whole numbers, which means that there's no decimals. So with an integer, if you end up dividing and you get a number that is a decimal, what you do is you just simply ignore everything after the decimal point. It doesn't round up. It doesn't do anything. It just simply truncates everything after the decimal. So 255 divided by 10 as an integer is actually 25. Now 25 mod 10 will just get you the first digit, which will be 5. So what we've got here is actually the second digit from above of the number, 255. So that's just the same system that we're just using to get the second digit out of this number. We just divide it by 10. And then we say, oh, then at address i, but this time at 1, which means 0, 1 in binary, which is the tens place digit. So we say in the tens place digit, program in the tens place number, which is how we get the tens place number with this math. So then we can say if i is greater than 99, because again, if it's, a, um, if it's only a two-digit number, say, for example, the number uh, 99, okay, we don't want to have a zero showing in the hundreds place digit. What we, we just want to have that digit be blank, right? We don't want to program anything into the hundreds place digit because there shouldn't be any number there. It'll be a lot easier to see. So I said only start programming the hundreds place digit if the number is greater than 99, aka starting at the number 100. 
and then I say I divided by 100. So the same thing here, just multiplied by, you know, multiplied by 10. So this way, if we take the number, say 255, then we get 2.55. And again, we truncate all the things that are after the decimal point. So we just get the number 2. 2 mod 10 is just going to return a 2 because that's the ones place. And so that means we program a 2 at address 255 for the second digit, or rather, you know, for the third for the third digit, which is 1, 0 in binary because we have a 2 here. So now that we've finished programming the hundreds place, you'll see that we have this extra code here, which is if number is less than 10, then write the number 255 at the address for digits 1 for the tens place digit and the hundreds place digit. Okay, so let me explain this code to you. So here I say, oh, if i is less than 10, aka it's a one digit number, then just set the tens place digit um, display off by setting every single bit high, which is the number 255. And then I say, also do the same thing for the hundreds place digit, set every single bit high. This way these LED segment displays are off, which is the functionality that I showed you earlier. Oh, and then I just do the same thing if the number is less than, if the number is less than 100, aka a two digit number, then we don't need the hundreds place uh, digit segment display, so we can just set every single pin high so that this way it's off. It's just a lot easier to read this way. It's, you know, it's more of a personal preference thing. So now that we have the ability in this EEPROM to access any digit of any number 0 to 255 and output them at the seven segment display, the next step is to actually be able to show all of them at the same time. So that's what we're going to work on right now. Our next task is to build the counter. So that this way, when we take this circuit, we can count through all the digits that we have. So first we need to start at 0, 0, and then we need to go to 0, 1, sorry, 0, 1, and then we need to go to 1, 0, whenever we access for a number. So what we need to do now is actually just build a counter that will go 0, 0, then 0, 1, and then 1, 0. So we just need a counter that does this. It goes 0, 0, then 0, 1, and then 1, 0. Now, if you remember, we did this with our program counter, which did 0, 0, 0, 0, then 0, 0, 0, 1, and then 0, 0, 1, 0, and then so on and so forth. We did this with JK flip-flops, and we needed four JK flip-flops to do a 4-bit counter. But for a 2-bit counter, we only need two JK flip-flops to do this. And we'll go over the circuit that we use specifically in case you guys have forgotten. Now, one thing that I do want to note is that a JK flip-flop won't start, stop at 1, 0, right? If we do a JK flip-flop system, rather, it'll go to 1, 1, and then it'll return to 0, 0. We can have an AND gate here, which connects to these two bits, and then we'll connect to the clear line of the JK flip-flops to reset us at 0, 0. This way, as soon as it hits 1, 1, it immediately goes back to 0, 0. And if, because the ICs work so quickly, really, we'll just say go 1, 0, and then right back to 0, 0. And that's sort of what we're going to do um, right now. So let's go over the circuit for a JK flip-flop again to build a counter. Now, I took some notes on the JK flip-flop earlier, which we can just go ahead and take a look at right now. And so we just have one JK flip-flop um, that has a clock signal that comes into it. And then we have the output of that JK flip-flop, the Q signal, go into the clock signal input of the next JK flip-flop, which has a Q output that goes into the next one, which goes into the next one, and so on. Now, because we only have two bits, we only need two JK flip-flops. So we'll just have a clock signal that fills, feeds into one JK flip-flop, and then the Q output of that JK flip-flop will feed into the clock signal of one other JK flip-flop, and that Q signal will be our last bit here. So what we need is one clock signal, aka a 555 timer, and then we need two JK flip-flops. Now I have JK flip-flop ICs right here. They have two JK flip-flops built into them, so we'll actually only need one JK flip-flop IC. And then we can go ahead and build the circuit. All right, so I've put down my 555 timer here, and we're just gonna go ahead and build the clock circuit. Now I'm really not gonna worry about the, um, the quickness right now. I'm just gonna go for it. Um, making it work, and then we'll worry about how fast the circuit um, works later. Now, so I'm going to use an AND gate and a NOT gate for one Q and two Q. So I'm going to have an, um, I'm going to have one Q and two Q go into an AND gate, and then that output of the AND gate is going to go into a NOT gate, which sets these, which goes to these two clear signals. So this way, when one Q and two Q are both high, we get an active low signal on the clear lines, and that'll clear um, this JK flip flop. You can see here that I've finished building the circuit, and we can go ahead and plug it in. And we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and then 0, 0 again. 
So now we can go through all the digits automatically. So now the next step is to hook this up. Now this is actually the first digit, so that will be hooked up to this line. And this is the second digit, and that will be hooked up to this line. Okay? So we can just go ahead and hook that up now. Alright, so here it is. We have the lines coming in, and we can just go ahead and plug in power, and we can test this out. So we have a zero. Alright, here we go. Zero. And then blank. And then it should be blank, and then it should show up zero again. Now, obviously, because it's blank, we don't know what digit it's on, actually. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and program the number 123 in, so we should see 3, then a 2, and then a 1, if everything goes right. If it's going in the opposite direction, then it'll be 1, 2, 3, but it should show a 3, then a 2, and then a 1. So the binary value for 123 is 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. So 3, 2, 1. And then to 3, 2, and then a 1. Okay, so this is actually working. So now it's going to go through all these digits. So all that's next is to add these other two segment displays, then a 1. So then we'll just have to connect all these seven segment displays up together. Now you'll notice that if we do that, we'll have a problem where it shows 3 on all these displays, 2 on all these displays, and then 1 on all these displays, when we really want to do 1, 2, and then 3. Now we'll figure out how to combat this problem in the next video, so please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohudin, and I will catch you guys later.